Hi guys, it's Judy here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Today I want to talk about nodes. So I think it was in my propagation video. I was cutting plants up and propagating them and I was talking about nodes on plants and I think I explained very briefly in that video what nodes were um, but I didn't really go super in depth into it and what it looks like on a whole heap of different plants. And I think on that video someone commented and said they're confused about what nodes were and what they looked like. And so in today's video, that's what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to explain to you what nodes are and show you guys a few examples of what nodes look like on different plants. So basically what nodes are, are I'm going to have to Google this myself for a proper explanation. I know what they are, I just don't have the right words to how to explain it. <laughs> So basically, a node is a point of attachment of a leaf or a twig in a plant. It's a small growth zone like within a vine or a plant and it's that growth zone spot where the buds, the leaves or branching out twigs originate from. Which is why when you see people taking cuttings or propagating, it's always really important to have a node as part of that propagation, otherwise the plant isn't going to take. There is no growth point for the plant to start a whole new plant. So that's basically what nodes are. Now I'm going to show you what nodes look like in several different varieties of plants and I'm going to start with a Hoya. I find Hoyas are really really super easy to propagate. They like getting cut and they, they root out really easily and the nodes on Hoyas are actually really easy to locate. So this is a Hoya carnosa I think. I threw away the tag, shouldn't have done that, but anyway, I did. And this is the vine. So when you're taking cuttings from your Hoya to propagate, you're gonna want a node, like I said before. So for example, if I was going to cut this Hoya, this, stre this particular stem, this is that node, this is a node right here. This is where the leaves originate from. So node, node is that little bump in the stem, that little knuckle where the leaves grow out from. So for example, if I cut this, if I cut it here and I cut it here, that is a node there. If I place that in water or sphagnum moss or into some moist soil, the root is going to grow from that node, from that little bump there, and from that will come a whole brand new plant. If you really think about it, if you cut this whole stem back and cut it at the nodes, there's one there, there's one there, this middle bit isn't important, nothing is going to grow from that, but then there's another little bump there where the leaves grow out from, that's a node, that little bump there is a node, that's a node, and from these points, if you put them into a growing environment, it's going to grow a root and grow out a whole new plant from that node, which is why, if you look at it, Hoyas are really super easy to propagate because they have lots of growth points, lots of nodes. I'm going to be saying node a lot in this video. <laughs> Another example for nodes on Hoyas. So this is a little propagation box, a very little propagation box that I've got going here. This is a, I forget the name of it, but it's a Hoya Car Carnelia, I think. I've already cut these up at the nodes. So this was one, one long branch, not branch, it was a vine. One long vine and I cut it up at the nodes. This has been in this propagation box for about three, four weeks now. And these are the roots that have formed from that node. So as you can see there, the roots have formed there and that little bump in the center there, that's the node. So like I said, this is the growth point. This is where the leaf, where the leaf is, where the leaf's growing out from, this is going to grow a whole new plant. Sometimes it really helps to have the leaf still attached to the node, but if you've gone and propagated your cutting and the leaf has gone yellow or it's dying off, sometimes you can just take that off, but the node itself is still gonna go on to form some roots and then eventually it'll form another leaf and then eventually it'll form another whole new plant. Sometimes it's helpful to have the leaf still attached so that it picks up the sun and photosynthesizes and helps draw in the light and the warmth and the everything to help the new plant grow. But if you have a propagation, like I said, and your leaf has gone yellow or it's dying off, you, sometimes you can take it off and often if the roots have already developed, it's going to grow, go on and grow on its own already and it doesn't need that dying leaf. So that's an explanation of what nodes look like on Hoyas. Most Hoyas anyway. All the Hoyas I have. I, I know there's a lot of varieties of Hoyas out there so it might not be the same for every single Hoya but for the most part from what I've seen, 
that's what nodes look like on Hoyas. Now I'm going to show you what they look like on a Syngonium. So a Syngonium is also a vining plant. Most vining plants have the char same characteristics when it comes to growth points and when it comes to nodes. But I did want to use Syngonium as an example because often Syngonium start out looking like a plant that just stands up. But the longer that you let Syngoniums grow, they're going to start to vine out and then just start to create their own vining life. So I'm going to show you here. This is a Syngonium pixie and when I first got this plant, it was very, very short and very, very small and it didn't have these nodes here. So can you see in the pot there? Right there, you can see a little lump in the stem, a little lump in the stem there. As these continue to grow, they'll grow more nodes and then an internode. An internode is between that, that stem, that useless bit of stem, not useless, but you know what I mean. The useless bit of stem between the nodes, that's an internode. So the taller that this Syngonium grows, the more nodes it's going to start to develop. So there's an internode, there's a node right there. Can you see that node right there at the bottom? And there's an internode there, and then there's another node there. So if I, if I wanted to take cuttings from the Syngonium, I would cut below the node and then pop that node in soil or sphagnum moss or whatever propagation medium that your choice is. <laughs> pop it in there and from that node, new roots are gonna grow and you're going to develop a whole new plant. That's basically the general rule when it comes to propagation of anything, cut, cut with a node. You need that node, you need that growth point in order to create a brand new plant. So that's what they look like on Syngonium. On Pothos, it's also quite similar. This is a Philodendron Brazil. It's not a Pothos. I think it's a Pothos. I get Pothos and Philodendron mixed up. I have so many people try and correct me and it's still not getting in there. But this, this is a pothos. This is a golden pothos. Here's a vine and these points here, there's a point there, that's a node, that's a node. These, where the leaves are growing out from, those are growth points. And if I cut it there and propagated that, that's gonna become a whole new plant. Often on pothos, you will see aerial roots coming out as well. So this little nub in here, coming on that, that node there, that little nub in there, that little nub in there, that is an aerial root. And some plants grow longer and larger aerial roots. It depends on the plant, how much light it's getting, how happy the plant itself is. Sometimes they will have longer aerial roots. And I'll actually show you the aerial roots on my Snow Queen Epipremnum. I'll be right back, I'll just grab it. I feel like this is a really good example on aerial roots growing from nodes. So this plant is really happy, as you can see. And on this Snow Queen, there are aerial roots growing from the node already. So for example, if I cut this up and place this in my propagation material of choice, this would take very, very quickly because it already has roots forming from those growth points. If you see aerial roots growing from those nodes, chances are your plant is really happy. If you don't like the look of them, you can always cut them off. But if you were planning on propagating that particular plant, I would say just cut them, don't cut the roots off because you're basically cutting, stunting its growth. <laughs> but if you're gonna propagate that, that would take very quickly and take very easily to your soil, your propagation medium, it'd go really well. So that's just an example of aerial roots growing from nodes. I think you kind of get the picture of what they look like on long vining plants like Epipremnum, Pothos, Philodendron, like vining Philodendron. They all basically have the same characteristics. On a Maranta, however, they are a little bit different. So on a Maranta, this is a red vein Maranta, also known as fishbone or pinstripe. This is a vining plant, and the nodes might be a little bit harder to detect on these plants. So as it vines out, the longer your branch or vine is, the more nodes it's gonna have because it starts keep, keeps on branching out and then branching out and growing a new bit and then branching out and branching out. So it'll have more growth points. It has, let me see, one, two, two nodes. This is a, this is a, this is a internode here, a stem. And then from here, you can see there's a new growth point. From here, if you cut below the node and pop this bit in soil or water, the roots are going to grow from here. And then there's another internode here, and there's a little knuckle there you can feel. So run your finger up the stem of the plant and feel that knuckle there. That's another node. So if you cut here, so if you cut here and cut here, you have two growth points there and you'll come up with two brand new plants. So that's what they look like on the Maranta. 
Now, this one is a Tenanthi. This one's been in water for about a month now, or a bit over a month. I actually cut this Tenanthi in my propagation video, my chop and prop with me video, and I got it from this mother plant. I got those cuttings from this mother plant here. Like I said, it can be a little bit difficult to detect or define where the nodes are on different plants. And on this Tenanthi, this is where it is. So you have a stem growing up there. There's a stem growing there. And then it comes up with a knuckle. So like another growth point there. And from that growth point, you have a branch out of a whole new bunch of growth. If I cut this here and put this in water, like I did with those cuttings, which I'll show you in a minute, put this bit here, roots will grow from this knuckle and then I'll have a whole brand new plant. So that's what nodes look like on Tenanthi. Most Tenanthi or most varieties of plant will have the same characteristics of nodes. And as you learn to detect what nodes are and where they develop on different types of plants, it's gonna get easier for you to detect where the nodes are and where to cut if you were gonna take propagations from your plants. So these were cuttings that I got from that plant that I just showed you in my propagation video and I actually wanted to update you guys on this because I forgot to update you in my propagation update video. So like I was saying before, there's that stem there. I cut it, cut the stem there, and then pop that whole knuckle in some water. And since then, roots have formed. How gorgeous is that? It's just gone and done its thing, mother nature or God is a wonderful creator, I believe, in creation. This is just beautiful. This is gonna become a whole new plant. Eventually, I'm gonna pop this in some soil and create a whole new plant. And since propagating, several new growth points have come through and started on this Tenancy as well. So that's a new whole new growth point there. That's gonna become another whole branch. And uh, there's another one behind there as well that's gonna grow out into a whole new plant and start its own growth journey of its own and it's the same with this one too. Now it was really interesting when I cut these off that Tenanthi and popped this in water. It took a couple of weeks before I actually started seeing any form of root growth and I left it in the water and after a couple of weeks the leaves just curled up and just looked really super dehydrated. I was like oh no it's not working those cuttings didn't take but then after another week or so, these roots started forming. And as soon as these roots hit the water and burst out of their little node, their growth point there, and started drinking up the water, these leaves actually un uncurled and started looking lush like a whole new plant. So it was really interesting just to see that growth process. If you have cuttings in water and they they're not showing roots after a week. Just be patient, give it a little bit of time, give it some light, give it some warmth, and eventually those roots will grow. And uh, yeah, you'll have a whole new plant. So it was just, for me, I just found it really interesting and intriguing to see that without the roots forming on the nodes, the leaves just curled up and died. There was nothing there to draw up the water into the leaves. So yeah, that was, I just found that really interesting. <laughs> uh, I've showed you the Tenanthi, Pothos, oh, Ficus. So I'll show you what nodes look like on a Ficus. Ficus, most ficuses are tree form type plants. This one is a yellow gem ficus, or you could call it, call it a lemon lime ficus. Like I said before, you need a growth point. So growth points are generally marked by a leaf coming from that growth point. So on a ficus, for example, these are growth points. As you can see, as you run your finger up along the stem there, there's a little knuckle right there and there's a leaf growing out to define that growth point. So if you cut here and you cut here and you put this in water or again your propagation medium, roots are going to grow from this and create a whole new plant. So this is what they look like on a ficus. Run your finger up, there's a little knuckle right there. Now this doesn't have a leaf attached to it, but if you place this in sphagnum moss, I personally would put it in sphagnum moss, roots will start to grow from this point because this is a growth point. I think that's what people call wet sticks. It doesn't have a leaf, but it's still a growth point. And yeah, they when they say I grew this from wet sticks, I think that's what they're referring into. That's a growth point there, that's a node, that's a node, that's a node. So if you cut in between those nodes and propagate those, you are going to get a whole new bunch of plants. Now, whenever I'm propagating, I always try and make sure that I have as many cuttings as
as I possibly can on the go with propagation because if I just took one cutting and just propagated that one cutting, if that cutting didn't take, because it does happen sometimes propagations don't take, to the soil, then you're left with nothing. Which is why whenever I take cuttings, I always try to have five, 10, 15, 20, as many cuttings as my, as I feel is okay for me to take off my existing mother plant. I take as much cuttings as I can. And if they all take, then it means I have a really lush, full plant to put into soil and it's gonna look really nice and full and lush. So when you see people with a really lush full plant at the top, that's generally what's happened is you'll need more than one cutting in the pot, in the soil, to have a really lush full pot. So taking this Snow Queen again, for example, looking in the top of the pot, it looks really lush on top, right? And that's because there are several cuttings within this pot that the growers have planted into this pot. I can't even count how many there are there's that many in there and that's why I always try and make sure that I have as many cuttings as possible planted into the pot before I let it grow and vine out like imagine how lonely this plant would look if it had one single plant growing out of it it wouldn't look it wouldn't look like this I'll tell you that right now <laughs> it wouldn't look like this I'm gonna show you guys one more plant what nodes look like and for that I'm gonna take my Monstera Deliciosa now this is a very big plant. She's a big one. This is one of my very first plants that I ever got in my plant collection almost two years ago. If I was gonna take cuttings from this plant, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna look for the node. So if you can see there, this is a Monstera Deliciosa is a vining climbing plant. I'm training it to grow upwards. So if I'm gonna take a cutting from there, I would cut it here because just above that, right here, that knuckle right there, that is a node. That's a growth point. But then also, and there's a, and there is a aerial root growing from that as well. But if you look very closely, the internode between the two nodes, the internode isn't actually very long in this plant because there is another node growing right here. So from that node, there's a leaf coming out there. That's a leaf. And then internode, and then there is another node here, and there's another leaf growing from there. So sometimes internodes aren't actually very, very long in between nodes. So I, I could actually cut it there as well and get another whole new plant from this bit right here. So it's really interesting. Before you go and cut, go cutting all your plants, just take a look at them. Actually look at the plants and define where those growth points are. And oftentimes there's more than you actually realize there is growing on your on your plant. So yeah, that's what they look like on a Monstera Deliciosa. Like I said before, over time, the more you look at your plants, the more you define where those growth points are, it's gonna get easier as you look at more and more plants and you'll be able to tell soon pretty quickly where those growth points are and where you can cut to take cuttings and to propagate them. I'm gonna put this monster back because she's really big. <laughs> That was gonna be the last one, but I'll actually show you my string of hearts. So I'm not gonna take the pot down because she's way up there, but she's actually long enough for me to bring here into the screen. <laughs> so this is a chain of hearts, as you can see. It's a little bit harder to define on smaller vines, like daintier plants, but they do have nodes. So I'm just gonna take one vine right here. Where those leaves are growing out from, that's a node. Even if it's like really super small, there's a little growth point there, right there. And if you cut that and place that in sphagnum moss or soil, that is going to grow out into a whole new plant. But like I said before, if you're gonna propagate something like this, something small, I would take as many cuttings as you possibly can. So that's what they look like on a chain of heart. When it comes to a long vine like this, or like this, for example, uh, another way to propagate is to actually ring this around on the surface of pot and I'm actually gonna propagate these in another video and show you guys how I actually show you guys practically what I'm gonna do with it but just to explain really quickly another way to propagate a string of hearts or even a long vining plant that has nodes or even aerial roots growing from it is to take another fresh pot of soil make sure it's moist and kind of like lay the vine on top 
of that soil. The nodes are gonna do their thing, the roots are gonna do their thing, they're gonna detect that there's moist soil underneath it, and from those nodes, roots are gonna grow and take into that soil, which is actually such an interesting thought to me. This is, I think this is what they call air layering, and I've actually done that with a lot of my pothos. If I have, for example, some space, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna find a better example. I'm gonna take my Hartley philodendron and show you. So the Hartley philodendron has the same node characteristics as a pothos, like I showed you before. So I was talking about air layering, right? For example, if you have the top of a pot that isn't lush, and full and you want to fill up those bald spots up there but you don't want to have to cut your plant to do it and i've done this before and it's a very effective method it takes time but it does work so i would take a vine like this from the existing plant if i can just untangle it so here we go this has a whole bunch of growth points a whole bunch of nodes one there one there one there anyway you get the picture so on and so forth if i didn't want to cut this and i just wanted to keep it in the pot and make the top of the pot a lot more lush like i said these are all growth points if this point comes into contact with some soil or your growing medium it's going to grow some roots and from that come a whole new plant. So this is what I do to make the tops of my pothos look nice and full. This is what I did with the Brazil philodendron. I actually air layered the top. And it's gonna take a little bit of fiddling and moving things around to make sure that the nodes come in contact with the soil. And sometimes you can use like bobby pins to pin them down into the soil to make sure that they're covered by the soil and then roots can start growing from those growth points there. Just ring it around the top of the plant, of the pot like this where the soil is. And then where those nodes are, I'll just pin them down into the soil, make sure that the soil is moist, but not too wet because your existing plant needs to not be overwatered. So it's just a bit of a balance between watering and making sure that those nodes have the moisture that they need. But over time, like I said, it's a little bit of a slower way to propagate, but over time, those nodes are gonna take to the soil and from that growth point, grow a whole brand new plant. And then, as a result, the whole top of your plant is gonna look nice and lush and full. And that's another method of propagation. I think that's what they call air layering. I'm actually gonna do that with this philodendron because it has some very, very long growth points there, but it's not as lush at the top as I would like it to be. Something I need to do. So yeah, that's a little explanation. Well, not a little, it was it's probably a really long video now, but I hope that explained to you guys what nodes are, what they look like on these different varieties of plants. And like I said before, the more you look at your plants and the more comfortable you get in defining what those nodes, those growth points are, you'll be able to define it on a whole heap of other plants without having to watch a video explaining to you what they are. <laughs> So yeah, that's basically it for this video. If you guys have any more questions, please do leave them in the comments. I would love to respond either in the comments or in form of a video like this. Thank you to that person who did ask that question. It was because of you that this video has been made. I hope it explained to you and cleared up any questions that you had in your mind and is able to help you with your cutting, taking cuttings and your growth journey and your propagation journey. So hope this video was helpful to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like it if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.